So apparently the game wasn't good enough. Well, that's a lie. The game was good enough, but we got talking about the things that the game could be, and my brain decided that even though I set aside enough time to finish this one little prototype and then move on, my brain decided it was a good idea to just go ahead and do everything. Because why not? Time isn't a, a real thing or concept, right? But before we get into what I improved about the game, my name is Helper Wesley, I've made these games, and I make weekly devlogs. Let's get into the video. Starting with just how ugly the game was. Well, it wasn't ugly, but I made the whole game in 24 hours, so I didn't exactly spend much time on the art. And I think that might be a running theme because, again, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on the art. What I did do was add a brick layer over the existing cubes to make them look like stonework pillars and walls. And I applied the same effect to the boss, but I stopped at the player for some reason thinking that the player would look better like this. I took the colors from my own avatar to use as the skin color and the hair, but I'm not sure if this is better or worse. And then I tried to rework the stone, but it was so small and so confined as, as it was, there was nothing I could really do to it to make it look better. I layered this new art over the existing art using tiled sprites, so when I tried to stretch it over a distance, it would repeat rather than stretching. And then once I finished all of the art that I was going to put into the game, I opened up the events and looked inside to see how I'm going to squeeze phases into a game that didn't originally have them in mind when I was making the code. There's already a first phase, where the boss just slams up and down in place, which gives the player time to roam around the map and get a feel for what's going on before they start the fight. And then once the boss takes damage, at that point they start using the tremor, the projectile, which is phase two. So I wanted a third and fourth phase for this game. The third phase would be the boss moving around the arena as opposed to staying in one spot the whole time. And nothing I had set up previous to this was set up in a way that would allow this to work. So I had to get in and really fool around with it. I had to go so far as to lock the position of the two collision boxes to the shadow. So what's actually moving here in the scene is the shadow, and everything else is kind of getting pulled along for the ride. I'm a bit of a dummy, so it took a little while to get everything to kind of work the way I wanted it to. I had set up three points in the arena where the boss would move to, with random chance once they've lifted up fully from the ground. Basically right now it uses a variable called position for the boss, and if that position is 0 or 1, it either goes up or down. So to make this work, I set the variable to 2, which means it's neither 0 or 1, which means it doesn't do anything. So while it's in transit from one location to the next, its position variable is 2, and when it reaches its location, it flips back to 0, so it drops. So like in all of these boss battle games with phases, the phase that's currently being used is triggered by the boss's remaining health. But before I move on to the fourth phase, I realized that the tremor didn't look very good. I had gone through and changed all the art for everything else, so... I'm not sure if this actually looks better or worse. It's kind of piddly looking now. It doesn't really scream, watch out. But, you know, I, I can't spend all day reworking artwork, so I've got to move on. And again, before I get to phase four, something else caught my eye. And that was the fact that people were able to continually hit the boss when the boss landed and basically take off all of its health in one go. Because there weren't any invincibility frames for the boss. Invincibility frames or iframes is basically a cooldown where you can not take extra damage. And it's really important in games to have that because, you know, if you don't, your player can get one shot by something stupid by getting caught in a wall somewhere. So to fix this problem it was pretty simple. I just went through and made it so that when you hit the boss, it flips a variable that prevents the boss from taking any more damage from you after that point, until they raise up and then drop again. So basically you can only deal damage to the boss once every time they stomp. And then I wanted to make the stomp more impactful. So when I do this, I do it very basically. It's just a timer that goes off, so say you have a one second timer. For the first half a second, the camera pulls down, or in the opposite direction from where the attack came from. And then for the other half of that second, the camera goes up. So it kind of bounces down then up a bit. And then after the second passes, the camera goes back to its resting point again. Which in this case is centered on the player. 
reading up on ways to make animations feel more punchy. I added in a time slow just for a fraction of a second when the boss slams down. And this is meant to give you that momentary pause where something's happened that demands your attention. But typically this is added when the player does something to add weight to their own impact, but in this situation I gave it to the boss, just to see how it feels. So now that I'm done fiddling around with little things like that, I needed to go off and start the fourth phase. Because at this point this whole game example thing is taking way more time than I thought it was going to take. So this last phase is going to be that traditional dropping things on the player phase. So I drew cubes that were going to be the same color as the boss to make it show that they're going to fall and drop on you, as well as drop shadows just like the boss. But these drop shadows will spawn wherever the player is, and then these cubes will spawn above that area, and will fall down and land on that spot. And if the player is in the way when the shadow and the cube meet, then they take damage. I tried drawing like a little brickwork particle explosion effect thing, but um, I'm really bad at that stuff. So instead I just created the same effect that the slam has for the boss, where when the slam happens it kind of creates this expansion outwards to simulate an air and dust effect. And so now that everything was put into the game, I wanted to go back and do some playtesting. And what I found is that because the arena is now larger, the way that I had the tremor effect working doesn't cut it anymore. Because the arena was smaller, basically, by the time they slammed down a second time, the tremor effect had already run to a wall and was deleted. But because the arena was larger, there was a chance that the initial tremor effect would still be there while spawning the next one. Which meant that when that initial one hit the wall, it would delete both that one, the particle effect for both, and the one that just spawned. Which of course is no good. So the quick fix for that was, if the tremor runs into a wall, it deletes. But also, if the boss raises to its full height, it'll delete as well. And that way you don't have the conflict from one tremor deleting the other one. And since I'm focused on the tremor effect again, I thought I would redraw it. And it's really bad. I don't know what it is about this, but I can't seem to get it to look the way I wanted it to. And so I decided to go for a spike. Spikes are obviously going to cause damage, and you, you immediately recognize it as a thing that you should be avoiding, so yeah. So now that all of this is done, I figured it was perfect, and it was time to send it off to the Discord to have people play the game and tell me how bad it is. <laughs> no, they, they didn't tell me it was terrible. Most often people will tell me things that should be improved about it, but rarely does anybody say that things are terrible. And the two things that I thought were the most valid were the game needing a health pickup, since now it's more difficult than it was before. And that time scale slowdown really didn't make any sense. Like, I really don't think it's meant to be set up so that your opponents can change the time scale of the game and mess you up. Anyhow, as for the health pickup, I wanted something fairly basic. I wanted something that spawned in from a tiny pixel, grew into a full size heart, and then bounced up and down in place until it was picked up. And I went a little bit extra on this and made like eight or nine frames for this one animation when I ended up only using three of them, plus the bobbing up and down effect. And I mean, this is basically just the same thing as damage to the player, but in reverse. So when you come in collision with the health pickup, you gain one health. And to prevent this from being broken, it only spawns when you have taken damage, so that way you, the maximum you will ever get is three health. When I first drew this heart, I put it into the scene and I realized that size is a thing. So it was a little bit too tiny for the scene when I first put it there, but then I blew it up and now it looks like this. So while I was playtesting a little bit to see how the game felt now that everything else was done, I just, I can't, I can't leave that spike the way it is. It, it just stands out. It makes no sense. So I'm redrawing it one last time. And I realized that it should just be a red cube just like the boss and the drop rock because that way the player's playing the game and they're watching out for these red cubes because they're immediately told that that means that those are the bad guys. So I played through it one last time now that everything is done, hopefully, and everything's better and there's phases now and all these cool things. But as I was praising myself for having done a good job on this thing, I'd realized that there was one last thing that this needed to make it a good tutorial game, and that's comments and notes. 
in amongst the events to make sure that people are able to actually understand what's going on. So basically the paperwork. <sighs> but now that that's out of the way, I've sent this new version in and like I said before, hopefully with a bit of luck, this gets picked up by GDevelop and you can take this example, break it apart, and learn how to make your own game using the mechanics in this one. If you enjoyed this video, maybe click on that subscribe button. And if you're serious about game dev and want to come talk to me personally, the link to our Discord is down below. And if you decide to click on that link, then I will see you there.